Hello Book 2. I have three new releases for you today, all from March. So if any of them trip your trigger, you can go right out and get them. Uh, and they're all novels. Now, I admit, I uh, have a preference for nonfiction, for history and biography. I would rather read uh, some author's new explanation of monetary reform in the Merovingian era than read yet another novel about a bitter divorce in Boca del Vista. <laughs> Uh, and yet, I read as much contemporary fiction as anyone I know. I basically try to get it all. Uh, and some of them stick out. And so I thought I would present you with three of those today, starting with As Close to Us as Breathing by, by Elizabeth Polliner. I don't know if you can make that out in the light. Uh, it's a uh, setting is a small town on the Connecticut shore where the three sisters from a Jewish family repair every summer to relax with their families and enjoy themselves and one summer there is a tragedy and a young witness to that tragedy must then grow up and deal with its ramifications um, and it's got a mighty sharp beginning the, the, the book is really really good I've never read this author before uh, and the very first paragraph which can often be a bellwether uh, lets you know what you're in for it, it goes like this the summer of 1948 my brother Davy was killed in an accident with a man who would have given his own life rather than have it happen the man was Italian and for my mother Ada Labritsky that was explanation enough for why he was a killer had he been Irish she would have said the same had he been Polish or Greek or even some kind of Protestant She'd have likewise put the blame on that. Back then it was common enough to think this way, to be suspicious, even hateful, of outsiders. And the Negroes and Jews got the worst of it. So had the man been Jewish, like us? I've often wondered if in her mad grief my mother would have attributed the killing to that. Kike, she would have called him in her rage, not noticing that in doing so she might, she, she'd have missed entirely that it was us, her family, a whole body of Jews, who are more to blame than anyone else. And that's the first paragraph. That pulls you right in. This is a, a, a smart author and a very affecting novel. Uh, next is something very different, Improbable Fortunes by Jeffrey Price, uh, who has a big strike against him right from the beginning. If you make the mistake of reading his author bio, I will now horrify you with it. Uh, Jeffrey Price is a screenwriter best known for co-writing Who Framed Roger Rabbit? How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Shrek 3. Seeking the refuge of small-town life, he moved his family from Los Angeles to southwest Colorado. Now, I don't know about you, but I only have to read that second sentence to hate his guts. <laughs> uh, this is, let's see here, it's, uh, he takes us on a wild ride into Vanadium, a dusty, down-on-its-heels mining town in southwest Colorado, where it would be fair to assume that nothing has ever happened. But you'd be wrong. As it turns out, quite a lot has happened, starting with a suspicious mudslide that destroys the town's main street and a cowboy, Buster McCaffrey, arrested for the death of one of the richest men in America. Also not promising. <laughs> Hijinks in little towns. <clears throat> a very regular source of literary condescension. And a character named Buster. Ditto. Uh, the, uh, give you a taste of uh, this is from chapter 10 uh, it, it was snowing the night a tall bearded man wearing a stiff poncho cut from the hide of an elk came into Norita's suit yourself bar it was only the roughest sorts that drank there he had ridden in on a horse the storm having made driving impossible the stranger sat down in a corner and ordered two shots of tequila that was just the beginning for the moment it was just he and the bartender the bartender poured he drank he drank until his eyeballs rotated independently of each other like those of a horned toad. When he decided that it was time to throw up, he calculated the distance from the front door and then the distance to the men's room. The men's room was closer, and there were chairs and tables to careen off in support on the way there. In the filthy bathroom, he did what he had to do, then rinsed his mouth and nostrils in the sink. <sighs> it's energetic. I'll give it that. I don't know if you noticed that... Uh, through a slip on the author's part, we have uh, Buster riding into the bar on his horse. 
<laughs> that kind of literary imprecision crops up all throughout the book. And another thing that crops up all throughout the book, you can't really tell from here, but the text entirely throughout is in brown. I've never seen that before. Uh, raw energy is about all you're going to get from this book. It turns out that repairing to the small town pleasures didn't really help Jeffrey Price much. Uh, and also, Shrek 3. Uh, but the third one is a masterpiece. Uh, it's The Association of Small Bombs by Karen Mahajan. And it's the story of two brothers and their friend who are going to a repair shop to pick up something in Delhi when a bomb goes off. The brothers are instantly killed and their friend Mansur is cast adrift. Much like in the Elizabeth Polliner novel, the rest of the book, the whole of the book, is really an echo chamber of trauma and how it affects people. Uh, there's a there's a, a wonderful quote here. Uh, he now saw that freedom from pain was a kind of sentence to your mind, free to cast about in any direction, latched on to every outcome, every path, every regret, whereas pain was focusing and drew you into yourself. It cut off options. And uh, the genius of this book really is watching Mansour's options get cut off. It's uh, stunning. It really is a stunning performance. I, I can't do it justice without giving stuff away, but uh, if you see it at the library or if you are in the mood for a novel that's going to get a lot of critical attention, feel free to buy it. Uh, and that's it. Three contemporary novels. I'm uh, feeling a little soiled, so I will go back to biographies of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, uh, and I'll have a greater variety for you tomorrow. Thanks.